really good sci-fi show that they canceled after the first season on a cliffhanger. Um, and I can't remember what it's called, but it was the first season was so good. And then I was so I didn't want to watch the rest of it when I was like two thirds oh, of the way through. Hold on. It's like the outsiders or the out others or something. The travelers. Well, that too. But it's a different one. The travelers was really good. But they gave that that show technically wasn't Netflix. That was the CBC. Thank you, Canada. I like that um, the objective that sh- of the uh, on the fucking outline is Yule Lads question mark evil children. I'm curious to know what show you're talking about. Cause what was yeah, it I about? Can't remember. It was about like they were kind of like almost mutants, and there was like all these like experiments done on these people, and like they all oh kind the of, like, kids. Are... No. No. Oh, yeah. Um, God damn. The Imperfects? There we go. Yeah, oh. that is a really good one. That was canceled? Yeah. Like, Talk, before the whole thing... Before it all aired. Guys, we're live. Bef- okay. <laughs> but I just want to say that The Travelers aired all three seasons in Canada before we knew it was a show. On Netflix. We're not going to have a three-hour discussion about your guys' nerd likes. All right, sorry, sorry, sorry. We're done. <laughs> With, we're done. We're done. Just, we're done. Warhammer and the Expanse and all that. I get it. It's good. Hey, uh, just going to say, there, there's like four Doctor Who Christmas specials that I have saved. Saved. And I'm going to watch them. Don't rile up Ooh. Alex. When you guys yeah, went I'm into the Stone engage. Gauntlet, I'm, 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 you I'm spent enjoying. an hour talking about Star Trek. <laughs> Dude, that's because, let's face it, Star Trek is the greatest TV series to ever exist on planet Earth. 100% agree. Like, I, there's just no, you can't question it. It's, it's just the greatest TV series it's franchise. The greatest, the greatest universe, fictional universe, to grace our universe with its presence. It's true. Listen, guys. That's this true. is like those Google ro- like Google Maps when it was in early stages. This may lead you into swamps and lakes. Uh, this conversation oh, will lead us in and Google Maps because I oh. had uh, I had an Android back then. Um, oh, you're right. Okay. So Apple did it then. This conversation will lead us into swamps and lakes. Hello, Lord of all door frames. Welcome to the stream. We just lost our narrator. Oh. <laughs> hey, what? Well, sorry, I was grabbing water. My bad. It's okay. I'm still it's here. Like, I'm just, 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 just grabbing I, some water. Welcome to Crook I'm and just... Murder. My name is Kenny Crook Irish Kirby, uh, and we are here today to talk about our Christmas special. Not nerd uh-huh. shit. You guys want to no. do that? Join us on the Stone Gauntlet. Well, it's just sorty, of, like this adjacent nerdiness. We've been kind of a... banned from that from that show, Alex and I. So more or less, yes, we actually have wanted <laughs> posters up at the Stone Gauntlet offices. Wait, so really? Do not what let these band? people in. <laughs> I mean, it's it's it, fine because it's not like I can leave this room anyways. So it's just it's in no uncertain terms we've been told not to participate. So I am joined today by Maxwell Murder. I am Maxwell Murder, and uh, boy, them lads are fucking silly. And, of course, uh, special guest Alex, who has once again returned to the show. I am special guest Alex, also known as special guest Alex. He is truly special. Um, so, <laughs> so, do you want me to read the introduction? I, apparently you want to read it, so go ahead. How would, well, not... you haven't heard uh, this Christmas song, like, at all. I, that's fine, go ahead. How I'm do not... you butcher it so bad? I'm, okay. I'm not upset about it. I thought he did but... all right. Yeah, I thought I did all right, too, but that's okay. All right, apparently go, go ahead. No, 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 Now you got everyone interested. See, I'm going to do it well. What? Kirby has a better singing voice. This is true. the three of us. This is true. This is probably true. This is the way. Yeah. All right. I'll yeah. count you down. Ready, baby? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Three, two, one, go. Up on the rooftop, soft little paws. Down drop 13 Santa Claus. Some will murder you and some will play. The rest will take all the children away. That's our introduction, guys. We're talking about the Yuletide lads today. 
Thank you for the sarcastic round of applause. I love it. I wasn't sarcastic at all. <laughs> no, that was pretty good, actually. I thought that was that was that was worthy of Weird Al. The Yule Tide lads are more or less Iceland's answer to Santa Claus, uh, but with a demented twist because its origins aren't exactly as nice as Santa Claus is. Uh, nowadays, they're mostly benign, as they brought them more in line with the uh, quote unquote holiday spirit. But as we're going to come to find out, where the Yule Lads come from could fit right alongside the Brothers Grimm. You know, the source material kind of says that, like, they're comparable to Santa Claus. But I, I got the feeling that they're comparable to Santa Claus if Santa Claus had, like, a murderous, like, uh, uh, Baba Yaga of a mom. Actually, yeah. Baba Yaga is a good way to, like, <laughs> describe Gorilla. <laughs> Really, really close. <laughs> Grilla we're going to briefly touch upon, and you're going to hear about Grilla and the Yule Cat, and rest assured, we will be covering them in a future episode. Just rest assured that there is a Icelandic giant cat that visits during Christmas. And, and essentially, it's vicious. essentially, he murders poor people. Because oh, he's man. a capitalist have... dickhead. <laughs> what the fuck are we talking about? I have not listened to any of this. Just Did you now. read the outline at all? I, uh, oh Jesus. God. I've been busy this week, all right? The cat will tear you to shreds if you re-wear an outfit. Yeah, all right. if you don't buy new clothes, it kills you. It's Speaking like the outline, maybe we should go over the uh, monster stat line so people oh, can get God. an introduction to this, all right? Uh, so... As Kirby already said, name, Yule Lads, classification, holiday ogre, slash trolls. Description, short, kind of dwarfish, which I feel a little, you know, is that racist? Can we say kind of dwarfish? Uh, I think that would be sizest. Um, okay, sizest. Uh, older stories describe them as monstrous. In more modern tales, however, they dress in typical Icelandic peasant garb and resemble <laughs> humans. Oh, so that's great. So they just turned it into poor people. Be scared of fucking poor people. <laughs> that was, that was so bad. Like, um, they're natures, they're tricksters at heart, and they'll pull pranks and steal from you. Uh, if you've been good, they'll leave you little sweets over the course of 26 days. Um, however, if you've been bad, they will leave rotting potatoes, kidnap you, or even eat you. So that escalates quite quickly. Um, Ooh, yes. If you want to know what they look like, technically it looks like me. Uh, bearded, short, and a little rotund. A little rotund? Is that what you're going <laughs> <Yeah>. with? <laughs> Great description. I think, I think, I don't know, from what I just, from what I read, I was picturing, like, ogres. So, like, they might look from a distance short but really they're like eight feet tall and very rotund so like before i put on my makeup in the morning exactly no no you ads. know what they you know what they kind of look like is uh that old woman from that disney movie wow that really narrows yeah. it down. I, I know that was real. Sp I can't <laughs> think of her name, and I can't think of the movie. I can picture her. But anyways. Um, Baba Yaga? Their powers are magical with magical instruments. A little redundant, but that's okay. So do they, they use magical magic? instruments as no, no, well no, no. as have magical powers. Okay. That would yeah. have been better worded. And then uh, two bullets. obviously they're from Iceland. Um, and can they be killed? Yes. Uh, there's this little thing that's ancient, has mystical powers that no one really understands called government bureaucracy, and it has made the <laughs> trolls benign in recent years. Good old government bureaucracy can kill anything. Uh, I would call it the government getting in line with, uh, Christian ideals and values. Yeah, kind of. Fucking yeah. wankers. Government bureaucracy. Yeah. Um... Ursula, no, they don't look like squids, unfortunately. I didn't Ursula. say that. <laughs> no, there's no, comments. I'm, we have yeah, an interactive yeah, follower. Yeah. All right. You want to All continue right. on, Alex? All right, so who are the Yule Lads? Stemming from Demiburger. Demiburger. Demi I'm, 
There's no point in trying to pronounce Icelandic names yeah, the so, so, in the frozen north of Iceland. You're gonna have lads, fun with this one. The lads yeah. dwell with their mom Grilla, their father yeah. Le- Leonardo, and the fabled <laughs> Yule Cat. <laughs> Lepaludi. 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 Grilla is a domineering ogress who represents the fear of hunger during the winter months. She does this by eating everyone. Like, <laughs> what it was, like, everyone, everyone? Like, it's, just so, everyone? Yeah. Grilla's, I mean, anyone she sees. Grilla's hunger is insatiable. So, she is constantly trying to eat. And it represents, like, the the fear of starvation uh, during the co- dark and cold of the frozen north. A lot of these yeah. uh, Icelandic creatures that showed up uh, showed up in the same way that the Yoki Uni uh, showed up, and that's yeah. like people would die out in the wilderness. And you they'd know be like, who trolls. I'm, you know who I'm picturing. If I made this movie, I would totally make Bjork Grilla. Absolutely. Yeah, I can see right? that. Right. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. Just like this unassuming. Like tiny person. <laughs> yeah. Like... yeah. I <laughs> want. Give her, give, her, give her gray hair. She's Uh-oh. perfect. I want Peter Dinklage to be all thirteen dwarfs. Uh. <laughs> wait, wasn't he the dwarfs? Didn't something come out lately that everyone was all pissed off that he was the dwarfs or not the dwarfs? You know what? I don't, what? I don't Let remember. Him pick his own roles. Jesus yeah. People. You know, all right. technically, technically. He's upset that Hollywood keeps giving roles to people that aren't dwarves because it makes uh it takes away jobs from people that are. I mean seriously. Go back to Willow, guys. They were so, all So Grilla people. Grilla <laughs> So I guess she eats everybody. And is also she's also one of the oldest mythological creatures in Iceland. While the lads did become kinder over time, she remained, oh, like all women, a monster and legend. <laughs> she was an uber bitch. She was yeah, the Karen of Karens. Cool. Yeah, if Karen ate... Well, okay, yeah. I really hope one day, if we do become famous, we just get, like, the right-wing alternate conservative fucking <laughs> ultra bastards. And then one day, I could just be like, no, now that I have amassed you all, you're all fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you you want to pull the biggest grift ever? The longest, the longest troll in human history. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I like it. I, I also all like right. it because we'd be perpetrated against stupid people. <laughs> um, all right. So their father, uh, like I said, Leonardo, is the third husband of Grilla, uh, and it's Le. Lepaldi, Lepaldi, Lepaldi. I just say Lepaldi. Le- uh, nobody Le-Pudi. outside of Iceland. Nobody outside of Iceland speaks Icelandish, so like it's such a hard language. Almost like yeah, uh, this is probably true. So Grilla Kit was uh, killed and ate her first two husbands, Gustar and Bolly, or Bolly. <laughs> Uh, or Gustar, oh. Gustar, part of the Monsters. Um, yeah. right, sorry. So a submissive troll, Lepaludi, is often depicted being beaten and berated by Gorilla. <laughs> Dude, she is monstrous. Jesus. You know, actually, I take it back. Bjork won't play Gorilla. Fucking uh, Charlize Theron will play Gorilla. Oh. Yeah, yeah, dude. She killed it in fucking 2000 and whenever that movie came out. Who keeps marrying this chick? She's got to be catfishing people on, like, Tinder. She's, uh, like, putting up pictures of Scarlett Johansson. Come to the mountains of fucking Iceland, and uh, we'll have a fun time. And they get there, and it's fucking Gorilla. Yeah, I can't wait to fucking read this cat's name. All right. Finally, they have a... Oh, go ahead, Max. I was going to say, in the original original Old Norris, the poet Edda put a personal ad in there for Gorilla. (laughs) (laughs) um so finally they have a pet uh which is the capitalist yule cat also known (laughs) as don't even try Uh, um the yule cat is a monstrous beast that roams the countryside during the christmas season essentially eating poor people now i want to ask 
is the cat eating people that are broke that don't have a lot of wealth or did you mean poor as in like oh these the, Look, we pity these people being eaten if you're not if you don't if you're not wearing a new piece of clothing yeah the cat's going to eat you oh, so you're not wearing yeah. like a fucking rolex walking down the street well, essentially it's just if, yeah essentially forever 21 would do really well hiring this cat yeah it, it's if you the story goes that if really? you, Forever um, 21 is the one that you went with on that? <laughs> no, I, I, I would have gone with H, H&M or something, but yeah. yeah it's, 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 but whatever. I mean, I got your point, but it's, very, it's, it's not the shop that I thought you would have gone to for that. Uh, if, the, if the Yule Cat catches you out, like, on Christmas and you're wearing the same outfit, or if, and you're wearing an outfit that is not brand spanking new to that day, it will eat you. Man. Keeping up with the cat dashians. Now, yeah. let's say you're wearing like new pants. Then you're cool, a man. New shirt. Yeah, look, yeah, as long you as you're chick. One, one new thing. One new thing. Oh, yeah. then it would be a condom every time for me. We got him. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Pre wrapped and ready to tap. <laughs> Did you just gag Max? <laughs> because the, the inverse of that is that someone out there is reusing them. <laughs> um, yeah, how much are you supposed to save money? Yeah. Remember, kids, always reuse your condoms. Save the <laughs> save the environment. I feel like if you're putting a new condom on every single day rather than just fucking buying a pair of socks. You're probably <laughs> spending more money in the long term. <laughs> um, but you're not supposed to wear them, like, all the time to just protect your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, but how else am I supposed to act all cool when I unsheath it? <laughs> um, all right, so traditionally there were 82 evil spirits well, that would descend on Icelandic villages during the dark and cold winter months. To answer Lord of Old Orframe's question, uh, how old... So it just has to be new for that season. The cat will leave you alone. Yeah, yeah. As long as you didn't own it prior, I think it could be second. Oh, so you could go to the thrift store, right? You could yeah. go to like Salvation yeah. Army. You don't have to buy a yeah. new thing every time you go out into Iceland. You just go to no, because that's still old clothing. You have to get new clothing. It's a capitalist cat. I, I, well, I, now, so kind of like with uh, Lord of Fall, of All Door Frames over here, though, like, you know, the moment it's outside the packaging. So isn't all clothing old clothing before it's, you Not, know. Look, if you go to Forever 21 like and you buy. Uh, crisis, man. Like, as soon as it comes into existence, it starts losing all oh, of its soul and energy. And so, one day you're. An early 30 man working a job that you don't really love sitting in front of a computer with two good friends talking about weird shit. Huh? <laughs> what? What are we talking about? That's What's going on? Big... So I read, so I, I, Kirby had asked me to do some research on this and I did. So I went and I looked through some of the prose edda uh, by a band named Snorri Strulinson, which is just a silly name. Um, who basically wrote everything we know about Norris mythology down. He was the first person to do it, um, not on a rock. But from what he said, it's someone who has not received new clothes to wear. So maybe it has something to do with a gift. I'm not giving you shit, Alex. Okay. That cat is going to eat your ass. That's fine. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense, too, since we all know cats are fucking evil. Yeah, especially big ones. And they'll eat big your Christmas, fucking dead Christmas bodies. Alright, <laughs> uh, so each of these 82 evil spirits represented a fear from the frosty weather of nature, uh, and none of them were a snowman. However, a poem by Johannes Yerkolum Coltum Kotlum Johannes Yer in the 1930 book y Yolen Coma <laughs> Jewel is coming, uh, translated, gave them popularized names and helped trim their number to 13. Yes, that very <laughs> popular number that no one fucking likes. We could blame old Johannes for this, I think. Johannes? For, Johannes for, for dumbing them down. 
Yeah. All right. So in the 13 days prior to Christmas, they will arrive in villages one by one and stay for 13 days each. Yes. Oh, that's a long time. Damn. Right? Yeah. So your ass is getting fucking killed. So on that 13th day, you have all 13 of them then. Yeah. December 24th. for th- 13 more days. Oh, my God. This is so perfect. I should have read this outline beforehand. The first one arrives on December 12th, and the last yep. one departs on January 6th, baby. It's a long, dark winter in Iceland. Man, yep. and apparently in the fucking United States of America. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's what Trump's defense should be. He'd be like, I wasn't the insurrectionist. The fucking Yule lads came to D.C. that day. <laughs> <laughs> it, wasn't the it was the fucking little Icelandic gremlins. <laughs> there, was, there was that guy who everyone called the shaman so I, oh, yeah, dude. this country you know would 100 you know agree with that he was he was like that little fucking monster in the men in black really there's like a ulad guy inside of him like pulling little levers <laughs> like, he had to, like control his body <laughs> um all right so during this time the lads would go from house to house causing mischief for being dicks so you um, know you know the uh, the shaman's uh, renounced QAnon because he wants to distance himself from that image. Yeah, yeah probably he's in fucking jail. Yeah, I was about <laughs> to say, probably like, how do I get out of here early? Exactly. Um, all right. So prior to 1746, these trolls or spirits would either eat naughty children outright, or they would kidnap the kids and deliver them to Grilla, uh, where she would mm-hmm. eat them in an attempt to satiate her hunger. Uh, I would be curious to know, because this is prior to 1746, I would be curious to know if this is in any way, shape, or form kind of connected to uh, the gingerbread house, the witch, Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel? Well, okay. Oh, yeah. So, here's the thing. We're, we're going to kind of touch upon it later, but I'm not sure if I put the full thing in the outline. Oh, no, I deleted it. This guy named John Arneson uh, was inspired by the brother's Grim, yeah. and at oh, the, okay. the end of the 19th century, he started collecting the stories of the Yuletide yeah. lads. Uh, but well, also, the Brothers Grimm were also heavily influenced by the Prose Edda, because that has influenced like almost everything we look at as Western folklore. But okay. th- this had less to do with like cautionary tales about going to strangers, and just cautionary yeah. tales about not fucking going outside. Period. Because Iceland, so Iceland's so goddamn cold during the winter time that it can kill you in roughly 82 different ways. That's why there's 82 different like spirits and gorilla up there. <laughs> so this was a way of like parents to be like, "Hey kids, uh, if you walk out the door and cause mischief, uh, you're gonna get your ass eaten." <laughs> Little barbecue sauce, children. Yes. Um, she right, sorry. Eats, actually, I don't think she eats trees. Um, uh, but geez. anything with a pulse. They don't have a lot of trees in Iceland. All right. Uh, so where did we leave off here? So Okay. So, uh, so after being reprimanded by the government, the lads settled into something nicer, but more devious. Uh, can you get more devious than fucking eating children? Yes. Oh, okay. And we will learn soon enough. <laughs> well, it's not that much more. It's not really devious or as bad as eating children. Uh, but they definitely fuck with Became you. Became more of like tricksters, like yeah. pranksters. Yeah. Um, boys and girls of villages would leave their shoes on the windowsill leading up to Christmas. And if they had been good, they would receive a little treat to our present. If they had been bad, they would wake up to find their shoes stuffed with rotten potatoes or Alex's poop. Thus, Iceland's answer to Santa Claus began to form. How old are you, Alex? (laughs) Old enough to shit in shoes. Yeah. Yeah, From, like, 1700s Iceland. Impressive. (laughs) I mean... Just before we get to it, I want to... Not allowed to shit in shoes? You absolutely are. Thank you. That's all I wanted to hear in my life. My favorite lad... Is number four. Let me look at that. 
really should have, I yeah. should have really read these four. I'll let you know my favorite lad after we go through all 13. Of them. I'm glad you didn't, to be honest. And Lord <laughs> of all door frames. Yeah, I, uh, I am too. Brilla is one of the oldest mythological creatures in Iceland. So yes. she could probably take dragons, giants, whatever. Like she is powerful. In fact, the, the very fact that there are still myths that talk about how terrifying she is to this day, uh, should speak wonders, uh, yeah. to her credibility. They didn't really gentrify her. They just kept her, like, mean and... Oh, angry. my God, dude, these names. All right, let's get into this. All right, the 13 <laughs> different Yule Lads. Jesus Christ. All right, we got... Deck Jarster. Deck Jarster. Deck Jarster. Deck Jarster. S-T-E-K-K-J-A-R-S-T-A-U-R. Otherwise, uh, Sheep Coat Clod. <laughs> um, arrives December 12th and departs December 25th. Claude tries to suckle and harass sheep. However, this is made difficult because he only has wooden legs. <laughs> Poor <Dude>. guy. <laughs> These are fucking bonkers. Like a milking stool. Oh my god. Why um, did they have to add wooden legs to him? It's like, all he does is just, like, molest sheep, essentially. And then they're like, yeah, but let's give them some wooden legs. Dude, come on. That's, that's fucking creepier, too. I mean... It really is. They're, they're fucking frightening to think about. All like, right. clomp, 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 clomp. Number two, we got Giljugar. G-I-L-J-A-G-A-U-R. Or Gully Gawk. Rives December 13th and yeah. departs December 26th. GG, as he's also known by three people. <laughs> That's his rap. <laughs> That's his rap name. Hides in gullies, waiting for his chance to slip into barns and steal the foam for buckets of cow milk. Dude, these are oddly specific. Dude. Like a real like... Just the foam. <laughs> just the foam. <laughs> yeah, just can the you, foam. Can you imagine explaining this to the police? My fucking foam is gone! <laughs> <laughs> well, how long was the bucket sitting there, sir? Just a couple days. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh. <laughs> number three, we got Stufer, S-T-U-F-U-R, or Stubby. Arrives December 14th and departs December 27th. Stubby is usually small. His job is to steal frying pans so he can s consume the remnants <laughs> of crust on them. Dude, <laughs> this is fucking wild shit. Yes, this is... <laughs> he does sound yeah, like I'm Mr. Krabs. Me. I, I I by no means mean to diminish anybody with mental health issues out there, but if I were to break up like the psyche of someone with schizophrenia, I feel like this would be it. You know what? You're being very sizist against these guys. I'm okay. sorry. I this, just... Look, this guy's got wooden legs, okay? Uh, and this guy, uh, he lives off the foam of cow milk, or cow milk, and just, just the foam, please. Just the, co just the foam. <laughs> Stealing frying pan so they can consume the crust on. Them. Although I admit, are these are these the the neutered versions by the government? Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. No, they're not. This oh, they're not. Original. Okay. Well, okay. This is like they did this. All right. Let's walk it back for a sec. There were eighty-two different spirits. And within yeah, those eighty-two okay. different yeah. spirits, there were spirits that like actually kidnapped and killed children. And then there were these guys. So yeah, there were the silly ones. <laughs> this was brought together so these are the by the thirteen poem. from yeah the nineteen thirty two poem. Okay. Yeah. Um. These maybe he's just describing. Ones. Maybe he's just describing different versions of Nazis. I mean, do I Nazis it, steal your frying pans and eat the crust from them? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. They were pretty fucking bad folks. Goddamn Nazis. I I don't think Iceland knew there was a war until it was over. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because they're at war with these fucking dickheads who are, like, going into their house and have stealing their coffee. Have you been hearing those explosions in the background? Where, where are those coming from? I don't, I don't know. You don't hear about the Nazis, like, you know, joining with, like, the Brits and the Canadians and the Americans storming Normandy Beach. 
Oh, Hitler would have tried to hire these guys. He would have sent out his special division to find the paranormal 13 fucking, uh, you lads. <laughs> and be like, I want you to go steal all the allies' milk foam. Okay, I just want to, I want to read this one thing. I'm going to read this one paragraph off of Google about Iceland in World War II, because I, I really you. like the juxtaposition. <laughs> Iceland officially remained neutral throughout World War II. However, the British invaded Iceland on May 10th, 1940. And on July and on July 7th, 1941, the defense of Iceland was transferred from Britain to the United States, which was still a neutral country until 5 months later. So I like the wording on that because it's like the Brits are like, "We're going to invade you." But don't worry, it's for your own protection. Yeah, what the fuck? What, so, like, the Brits were just like, oh, you know what, I don't got enough shit to do holding off fucking Germany on the side. Let's go invade Iceland. I mean, this is, it reminds me of Archer. You know how he's always referring to Ireland as one of the Axis countries? Yeah. And then they're like, yeah. wait, no, they were, they were neutral. And he's like, ah, oh, good enough. Good enough. <laughs> um. <laughs> all right, let's let's get back on track here. So number number favorite, this is my favorite one. All right, so number four, uh, murder's favorite one is. Go ahead and I say don't it. Even... The, yeah, I'm trying you're, to. You're but... the narrator. Boris <laughs> Licker. Boris <laughs> Licker. Um, uh, or, or, or Spoon Licker arrives December 15th and departs December 28th. Snatches and licks wooden spoons. This practice has caused him to be a malnourished as a oh, result. <laughs> you know, he he steals all the wooden spoons in your house. How annoying is that? I I, was... Dude, it's not even that, but he like licks them too. He's just <laughs> like, you know, one and could you know almost little fuckers putting some of them back and like fucking just giggling all the way out. One can almost argue all they've really done so far is clean your dishes. That's really neat. Well, okay, so if that's, if that's where we're going to bring that up, let's talk about the fifth one then. So then we got Potoskifil. Potoskifil. Potoskifil, or Pot Scraper, <laughs> arrives December 16th and departs December 29th, steals leftover food from cooking pots. Well, okay. So, you know, they got to eat. Like, I've, I'm on the 13 dwarf side. Ooh. I think it's Lord of all door frames, we're definitely going to come up to your favorite one soon. <laughs> um, I definitely love that Spoon Licker is malnourished because he doesn't get, like, the scrapings or the foam. He just licks the spoon. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He's malnourished. <laughs> this poor guy. Like, nobody's throwing uh, him anything. It's just like, I guess I'll lick this fucking spoon again. Hopefully he's got meat on it this time. All right. Uh, all right. Number six, halfway there. Say it. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a normal thing. <laughs> ask cat liquor. Ask the liquor. What is Arrive. it? Lilica. Lilica. Ask the liquor. Ask his liquor. Ask the liquor. I'm assuming it's also supposed to be. Uh, you didn't put a description for this one. I and, I don't, and I don't. And I don't want to say what it is because I don't. I don't want to be wrong. Alex, it's exactly what it sounds like. Is it? It's an ass licker. It just goes around licking asses. No, you fucking perv. Yeah, Iceland. Uh, Iceland. Look, everybody knows that Aska in Iceland stands for pots with a lid on it. This guy no, walks around totally, licking totally pots with that. a lid on it. How did you not know that? Oh man, you set me up for that one so bad. All right, so it arrives December seventeenth and departs December thirtieth, licking all the pots with lids on them. Well, it, I think I think it's a tradition in Iceland to kind of like eat out of these covered bowls, these wooden covered bowls. I saw a picture of one on Wikipedia, and uh, or it was. And well, how do you eat out I of think, a covered bowl if it's covered? Well, you uh, you uncover it. Yeah, there's this little technique called taking the lid off. <laughs> I, well, then, that's, that's, but then it's not a bowl with a cover on it. Well, anymore. then you put the cover back on. Look, <laughs> I think people eat in their beds there, or did, and like they would put the bowl on the floor, and if the lid wasn't on it, 
the dog would eat it or the ass liquor would eat it. Yeah, you know, like how you just keep a bot like a bag of Cheetos underneath your bed at all times, Alex. It's kind of like that, but with a pot with a lid. Well, ever since I started this podcast, I haven't been able to get to my bed because you've locked me in this room. I used to keep a pint of vodka in my bedside drawer back when I drank, and sometimes there would be vod. It would be empty, and I didn't remember drinking it. Ahoy, Oni Ram! Welcome to the stream. We're midway through the thirteen uh, Yule lads, and we just learned about Aska liquor. All right. Um, and now we're gonna learn about which Lord of all f- uh, door frames. Uh, this might be this your, is favorite your favorite one here. This is your favorite. This is Call your favorite right guy. Now. You're a you're a scler, which is door slammer. Arrives <laughs> arrives December 18th and dispar- departs December 31st. Wakes people up in the middle of the night by stomping around and slamming doors. This guy's a dickhead. Sounds- <laughs> Give it that. Sounds more sounds more like your drunk dad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for real, right? Yeah, um, dude, maybe that's what this is. Maybe this is just the thirteen facets of drunk uncles. It's just giving them that's an ex- excuse to be a dickhead. <laughs> exactly what it is. So far, that's all it is. Um, all right, uh, number eight, we got the Graguma or the Gear Gobbler. Arrives December 19th and departs January 1st. And he just really likes scar, which is yogurt. So he eats all of it. You know, he could probably give some to Spoon Liquor. I really, I I feel like this is more uncomfortable than some of the creepier stuff we do. Because it's just so weird. Yes. But like not like truly harmful, right? But it's like. If someone broke into your house. Clean, washed your dishes with their tongue, and stole all but one spoon, which had visible saliva dried on it. That would be really disturbing. And then ate all your yogurt and slammed your doors like a fucking douche. Yeah, yeah. He like woke up with all the doors slamming, and then you come out and there's there's like things skittering all over the place, but you don't see them. All right. I like, I will suggest after uh, doing this episode, if we cannot do any more. Anything from like Iceland, Sweden, or anything, because these names are fucking killing me. Oh, just you I, wait, man. We got Grillo. Um, <laughs> at some point. Okay. I listen, listen to the pronunciation of some of these, and I still can't do it. All right, we got Bien Bien Cracker, Bien Cracker, Bien Cracker, uh, which is a say sauce. Like, what? Say it. Like, say it like a gay Hitler. Yeah, that's... Yeah, crack up. <laughs> that is, uh, Not yeah, gay crack enough. <laughs> um, all right, Sausage Swiper arrives December 20th and departs January 2nd. And uh, he grabs, <clears throat> jerks, and gobbles people's sausages so he can get the juicy filling inside. Yeah. That sweet, sweet squirt, squirt, if you know what I mean. Yeah, because they're wrapped in, like, that film, so you got to... This is totally you... like a drunk... Like a holiday creepy drunk uncle. <laughs> just your this uncle. Like, those... I'm just gonna give me some fucking sausages right now. All right, you guys, oh shut up for a second. Point out, point out that the sausage swiper, uh, in in the original poem and the prose edda, didn't jerk sausages. Look, he hid in the rap. He hid in the rafters and snatched the. Sausages that were being smoked. He jerks sausages, okay? Because <laughs> sausages have that weird film around them, and sometimes you really just gotta, you just gotta go at it. You gotta jerk it up and it's down it. until sure. the film yeah. comes off, so you can eat the sausage inside. I don't see how you guys are missing the point of this. Right. I'm moving along it. here. We got the Glugengagger, or the window yes, keeper. Arrives <laughs> September. It must be my favorite one. Arrives yeah. September twenty first and departs January third, and uh, does exactly what you think it does. Just kind of peers through windows, looking for something to steal. Uh, perhaps like sausage. virginity uh, or a sausage. <laughs> <laughs> um, then we got the uh, kick croaker or the meat hook. Makes the least, the least sense. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I skipped one. Number eleven. Sure. We got the, <laughs> the meat- 
Uh, you know, Ethan Hawke is probably if we ever do a movie, it should be Ethan Hawke. This is one hundred percent Ethan Hawke's. Yep. Yeah, dude, and fucking genetic yep. fucking defect. All right. Anyway, uh, also known as Doorway Sniffer, <laughs> um, arrives. <laughs> well, no, it kind of sounds like Gattaca. That's where. I, that's why I made yeah. the Ethan Hawke reference. All right. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, I got the genetic the genetic thing now. I appreciate. Okay. That. All right. All right. So arrives December twenty second and departs January fourth. Uh, and he uses his big ass nose to sniff asses and locate and steal bread. You've heard it here first. <laughs> Alex thinks Ethan Hawke licks asses and steals bread. I also think he's a genetic defect. Yeah, or just normal. Well, just, yeah. Or yeah. or he's got the heart, man. Even though he technically has a bad heart. Well, I didn't realize how in your face that was until now. Or he's it's half a... hawk. <laughs> all, right. Um, all right. And then we got the Keck Crocker or the Meat Hook. This is number 12. Arrives December 23rd and departs January 5th. And he uses a. Oh, I thought he stole meat that was on a hook. No, 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 no. He, he uses a hook. hook. He, he has a hook to steal meat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then last but not least, we got the Kurt Kurt, 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 Kurt. Yeah, all right. Kurt. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, you there got, we go. well, all your Okay. Before we do the next uh Iceland episode, Alex, you got to go out and learn the entirety of the Iceland language. It's uh you know, that's your homework. Is it on think... uh Duolingo? <laughs> probably not. <laughs> it probably is. I heard somewhere that uh the only language that iceland icelandic like old like new icelandic sounds like is is a uh, estonian you know uh that's kind of crazy i'm reading an article right now did you know did you did you know that the icelandic language is one of the few languages that has almost no dialectical variation i was I aware mean, of that i guess a small so, country a lot of inbreeding right you know what i mean everybody's everybody's brother or sister. E- either, oh, either they're Finnish. They're one all our viewers in Iceland. Yeah. <laughs> it's so... they're, they're gonna they're gonna love us. By the all way, right. I too read an article today from Article Insider, and one out of ten doctors agree that you can feed chicken nuggets to your snakes. You have a snake? Well, why wouldn't why wouldn't you be able to feed a chicken nugget to a snake? Oh yeah. the, 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 what I just said you could. Yeah, but, but I, who, who who the fuck would be like, nah, don't feed that chicken nugget to that snake? Why, why is this being asked of MDs and not veterinarians? Ooh, that's also a good question. Let's Don't worry about schematics, okay? <laughs> can, <laughs> you can throw is, your chicken is, nugget can, into can, a is, snake. Is snake. Is snake code for your butthole? <laughs> it does make pooping easier. Um, all right, so we got the Kirknesker, which is the candle stealer, arrives December 21st and 24th and departs January 6th, chases after, he, this thing chases after children to steal their candles, because, you know, so many fucking kids walking around with goddamn candles. These were once made of tallow, animal fat, and thus were edible. Mm-hmm. I mean, technically, also... technically I would say candles are still edible. Technically. What? Technically, you're, you can technically, yeah. I, you, you can, can eat, eat a you can eat wax. You can eat a candle. Yeah. You can eat wax. It's, it's not healthy, but yeah, it's not gonna yeah, kill I mean, you. Well, the, kill yeah, you. you can eat anything because anything's well, not healthy. Uh, <laughs> you you can just eat saying, crayons and Play-Doh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I'm say, not. I have to say that, that that this guy, the candle stealer, is the enemy of Hanukkah. Oh. oh, that's true. Yeah, don't move to Iceland. <laughs> you heard it from a Jew. Don't be a Jew in Iceland. <laughs> You're <laughs> fucked if you the, are. The true story of Hanukkah involved the Maccabees not fighting off Greeks or Romans, but fighting off an Icelandic candle stealer. Yes, and you can eat doors. All right, I agree well, with we that. Know, we know what Max's favorite one is. We know the arch enemy of Lord of all, uh, Lord of all door frames. Ken, what's your favorite one? Oh, uh, probably Ask a Liquor. Okay, 
Okay. I think I'm going to have to go with the window peeper. The window peeper? <laughs> yeah. That says a lot yeah. about your psyche. Yeah, I definitely think you're I'd just, have to go with the window peeper. You're like, you got any tips? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, let's go over some of the differences of the old versus the new uh, 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 lads. Um So the lads first appeared in a 17th century poem focused on Grilla. Some were depicted as harmless pranksters. Some were child-devouring monsters. Uh, they were used as warnings to encourage good behavior in children, like most, you know, mythology. And as well as watching uh, over your shit during the winter months. Wait, what? As yeah, well because... as watching over your shit during the winter... Oh, wait, Because hold on. fucking... Look, all right, Greg from next door <laughs> will, like, pop over and steal your pies. So this is, like, a way uh, of saying... Greg's, Greg's a fucking dick. Keep an eye on yep. your shit so Greg doesn't steal it all. Fuck you, Greg. Fuck you, Greg. Yeah. yeah. Uh, However, in 1746, King Christian VI of Denmark was against traumatizing kids with Christmas stories. So, man, what the fuck happened to your childhood? Yeah, what, <laughs> yeah. what happened to your guy's childhood that he was like, nah, brother, you can't, can't scare kids with Christmas stories. Pretty sure that Hamlet was based on him. No, that's um, not true, actually. No, okay, so so he the was last based on a different thing, yeah. So the last uh, year of his life, he decreed on domestic discipline, prohibiting the use of you lads as a scare tactic. The, the decree was enforced in villages and towns. It took well into the 20th century before the countryside fully adopted this new outlook. However, this uh, yeah. However, this act would change the folklore of Iceland forevermore. I just. So this is a, a, a this is the king of Denmark. He probably had witches burned, and now he's worried about scaring children. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, it's that's what I'm saying, dude. Something that fucking uncle fucking diddled him like, under a Christmas tree. It's, it's like, but what about the children? <laughs> you know what, guys? Uh, Still, hey, look, this holiday on Christmas Eve. Sit your kid down and be like, you could be a dot, or you can be taken at any moment by a dwarf tonight that will eat you and devour you and or take you back to his mother where she'll eat you and or devour you. So be good on Christmas Eve. See? Or we just can... tell them that Santa's always watching. Always. All the time. Always. always. There's, and then point to the camera in the corner that you set up. <laughs> just know yes, exactly. that there is a married old man who enslaves childlike creatures that is always watching. Always watching. And yep. probably jerking it. No. Yeah, well, don't a, tell your kids yeah, that. That's probably. just scary. All right, so <laughs> at the turn of the century, uh, which I'm assuming by turn of the century, you mean the 20th century? Yeah. Okay, so at the turn of the 20th century, wealthy merchants began hosting parties featuring the Yule lads handing out presents. The lads also began visiting children in schools and hospitals where they would bring them gifts. Finally, and lick their right spoons. And lick their... Oh, man, that sounded dirty as <laughs> fuck. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 um, okay. The lads also began visiting children... Oh, I already said that. So finally, radio broadcasts would air featuring the boys singing carols and telling stories. The boys is in the Yule Lads, I'm assuming. Yes. Um, yeah. By the, the 19th... The lads. By the 1930s, it was mostly accepted that the Yule lads were now good. Thus, Iceland's answer to Santa Claus was solidified. We will bring this cheap bastard down. <laughs> no. uh, <laughs> the lads. Did you guys hear about Ireland uh, in in Congress the other day? Did a uh, official motion to allow Santa Claus? to enter their airspace without getting shot down. Oh, the good. 24th Thank and goodness. And I was oh just God, like, so I was just like, I'm so glad that there's a government out there that uh, can agree on something. It's well, I mean, it is, nice. it is kind of a miracle that Congress actually did something anywhere. Well, so, yeah. Well, I think like in Ireland, it's a parliament. to but... worry about. Um, all right, so for much of the 20th century, the lads all wore red like St. Nick. 
However, in the 1980s, the Icelandic National Museum started featuring the boys in their traditional Icelandic peasant wear. This was an attempt to reintroduce Icelandic customs before they went uh, way off course, and uh, apparently it worked. Curators of the museum began inviting children from schools or preschools to learn about the history of their country. And nowadays, the Yule Lads have drifted away from the Santa image and closer to their traditional outfits with a new, nicer mentality. And uh, that's the Yule Lads, baby. You know, honestly, I I agree with what Iceland did because they were essentially like, no, 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 no. This is not, we're not trying to make this Santa Claus. This is no, still this is still our fucking folklore, and we want to recapture mm-hmm. it. And they did it in spades. Like they did a really good job with that. No, they did a good job. I'd also like to just like because I think we're someday we should we're we're probably definitely gonna do an episode on Greta, but uh, like, so she she like her first mention is in the 13th century, but you'll notice that like. The first mention of almost everything Nordic comes from the 13th century because it's comes from the prose Edda, and uh, she goes back to like pre-Christ. So like it might be really interesting to like hear what yeah this gotten up to. This is like when fucking Frodo and Sam avoided Sauron and stumbled into fucking Shelob. You know, it's like a creature older than the Earth itself. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like that. She was an old bitch going back 2,000 years. And she's still an old bitch today. So, good job, yeah, she, Krilla. Don't ever, don't ever change, Krilla. <laughs> yeah. Love you. Yeah, Charlie's um, there on. Never go away. So you're saying Never Krilla just away. moved to Hollywood and changed her name to Charlie's there yes. on? 100%. Yep. All right, you know what? I'll stick yep. by that. And then she read the script for Monster and was like, oh, I can be my true self for at least two and a half hours. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Um, Take off this right. makeup. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I got really nothing else to say, although I really like the Yule Lads. I kind of wish that they would um, go back to the original just eating fucking children, but... Well, yeah, well, I mean, the King of Denmark's dead, so they could <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that king of Denmark the is king definitely of dead. Denmark is dead? Yes, from the Christian 17th century. Um, uh, God, I wonder if he's that same one who... Oh, never mind. There's a whole witch side quest with him, I think, where he burned a bunch of witches. So let's go ahead and discuss the upcoming topics. Guys, we're going to take two weeks off. It is Kirk and Murder's winter break. And uh, we'll be coming back at you in January, uh, where we will be going into our descent into hell. Uh, Well, if we're taking two weeks off, you guys won't forget to keep sending me food and water, right? So we're going to go ahead and talk about King Solomon. (laughs) Uh, The the myth, the legend, the man. And then we're going to talk about the greater key of Solomon than the lesser key of Solomon. And we're going to use that to segue into uh, topics about Lilith, the Dukes of Hell, the Princes of Hell. We're going to basically go full demonic for the next couple months. It's going to be a trip. We're also going to discuss the Dukes of Hazard. No, we're not. <laughs> nice try. Can Max and I discuss Star Trek if it relates in any way, shape, or form to what we're going to be talking about? I have a feeling you're going to find some obscure Star Trek, or Star Trek fact, and this is going to turn into a three-hour episode. I'm trying to think. I don't think there actually is. Uh, they, really, they didn't really touch on demons. Yeah. This is more yeah. or less the Dante's Inferno of Crook and Murder, because uh, we're going to tell you how to... Underrated summon... game, by the way, if anybody plays it. Under <laughs> Underrated. Anyway. Video. We're video just, game. We're just Dante's gonna move. The, we're not it's gonna talk. Video game. It's not a video it. game. <laughs> it, it is. But yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure Dante Inferno's is a video game. Yes, Dante's it Inferno is. is a video game, based off a of much better literature. And I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying, it's underrated. <sighs> I, 
I think I, I think I bought it but never played it because it came out a while ago. Uh, yeah, thirteen years ago. Yep. I actually like Dante's Inferno. It was a pretty good game. It was decent okay. for what it was. Yeah, without a doubt. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll the, stop it. The, the levels all built in. It's it's easy. So we're gonna be talking about who the Dukes of Hell are, uh, who the princes are. We got Exorcism Hellhounds coming up. Uh, we also got Pazuzu from the Exorcist coming up, uh, as well as, I don't know if we'll necessarily tell you how to summon demons, but we'll be talking about how to summon demons. We'll, we'll tell you how Solomon did it, because you're not going to be able to replicate that. Yeah. I, I feel like we have a responsibility, kind of like Breaking Bad, to talk about demons, but not talk about how to summon demons, if you know what I mean. Honestly, I wrote these outlines a while ago, so there may or may not be a way to summon demons in there. We'll okay. find out when we go through the podcast. All right. Every time you say Dukes of Hell, I really think you're about to say Dukes of Hazard, and I don't Max, know what's wrong with my head. Max is going to start his own podcast called the Dukes of Hazard podcast, where he just talks about that. What, what a terrible show. Um, yeah, baby, I know what I'm going to do. All right. There's a Doctor Who episode that deals with Satan pretty well. I just Two found some sound there. bites for the Dixie Horn. Oh, dear God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> How do I make mute this, him? Make this into a <laughs> 1980s radio t- t- fucking uh, radio jock like fucking morning episode. <laughs> this is Crook Irish at K7QRQ in the morning broadcasting live from Utah. All right. Um, I guess as Jones. always, you can find an uncut bothered. version of the show on Twitch and YouTube. Complete audio and edited versions of the show can be found wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And if you'd like to support the podcast, you can join our Patreon at www.patreon.com slash Studios. And if you're interested in learning more about any of the topics discussed here, you can start by finding a list of our sources under the description of each episode on your preferred platform. And as always, you can email us, but be nice, at crookirish.studios at gmail.com. Or don't be nice, because Alex controls that part of it. So... Uh... Yeah, joke's you on do. you. I still don't have the password. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought I did, but you could be me. I don't care. Uh, a shout out to John Zara. He has his own YouTube channel. That is J-O-H-N-Z-A-R-R-A. And he allows us to end the episode with old Lang Syne. So please go there and give him a follow. He's got some awesome shit there. A shout out to our mod today, that is Oniram93, O-N-I-R-A-M 93. He is on Twitch. Go to his channel and shoot him a follow. The dude plays a lot of uh, Overwatch, like I do. So if you want to learn how to get good at that, he can help you. And then finally, a shout out to Lord of Old Doorframes for interacting today. That is L-O-R-D-O-F-A-L-L-D-O-O-R-F-R-A-M-E-S. Unlike Icelandic language, it is exactly like it sounds like. (laughs) You guys ready to close this out? Yeah, let's do it. I am Kenny Crook Irish Kirby, and keep it weird out there. Um, I am Maxwell Murder, and... uh... Dial M for the lads. Uh, and I'm special guest Alex, and I have a challenge for everybody listening tonight. Between now and January 6th, lick as many spoons, sausages, pots, lids, windows, doors, and ass cracks as you can. Winner yeah. will receive one free coupon to Pizza Hut. Are you paying for uh, that? Uh, <laughs> I'll pay for that. that a, yeah, fuck that it. That was a real disappointment. <laughs> Listen, if you guys go uh, lick everybody's spoons on this holiday season, Alex will buy you Pizza Hut. I'm no, no, no. Some Christmas no, no, no. I'll get like you a coupon to Pizza Hut. There's a difference. Yeah. <laughs> coupon to Pizza Hut. There's a big difference. <laughs> Send you one coupon to Pizza Hut. Alex will send you 10 pepperoni pizzas. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't make promises for me.
What if we went caroling as the Yule Lads and did all the things that the Yule Lads do? We just broke down. into their we'd house. Probably, we'd probably get arrested, but... Slammed their doors yeah. like their spoons. I... Peep yeah. through their windows. We'd sing a song and then we'd like break in and 